The number one unwritten rule when you face your biggest rival, take the field in style. November 2020, South Florida unveiled these fresh slime green threads for the annual War on I-4 between the Bulls and in-state rival UCF. The new look featured slime from head to toe. All right, one more team to get to today as we wrap up the American Athletic Conference 2022 Media Days, and that is USC, or sorry, USF. Oh, yeah, don't do don't that. Do oh, that. Tampa, oh, they'll word. go nuts. I know. USF, uh, the Bulls went 2-10 and 10 last season, but they return a lot of talent down there. They also get a quarterback that transferred from Baylor and Gary Bohannon. I mean, the future looks really bright for Jeff Scott's team. To me, this is the most intriguing team in the American. Uh, you talked about all the pieces coming back. I think, and Coach will probably say this, I want to say they got over 15 players out of the transfer portal. Many of those, quote-unquote, power five players. They had Bob Shoup as a defensive coordinator who's been at multiple um, big-time schools. Um, this week just hired Chad Morris, former SMU head coach, former Arkansas head coach, who Jeff Scott coached with at Clemson as an analyst. So adding a lot of pieces to that program so uh, market improvement to say the least I believe out of USF this season yeah also I mean Chad Morris the guy who can recruit he was actually just here in Allen uh, Texas yeah. as a high school coach I want to run through some of the experience they have on this team 21 of 24 starters returning from last year their top four rushers their top three receivers and six of their top tacklers from last season oh and one of their top returning specialists and Brian Batty. I mean, so the amount of talent is there. Now they have a guy in Gary Bohannon who comes over from Baylor. He was injured towards the end of last season, loses out the quarterback battle, uh, but it gave him a chance to figure out where he wanted to go, which is interesting. It's really the only time this season that we've seen coaches make a move, and it allows USF to be able to say, hey, go out and get that guy before fall camp. Yeah, and he, Gary Bohannon is electric. I don't know if you've seen him play. If not, you're in for a treat this season. And I mentioned Jeff Scott bringing in Bob Shoup. Travis Trickett as well as offensive coordinator. So new OC and DC to all that talent he's bringing back and then all the additions through the portal. So I am very intrigued with this team this year. I can't wait to see them play. I'm sure Jeff Scott has to be excited. Let's join him now, head coach Jeff Scott. Coach, Thanks so much. I mean, you must look at the roster that you've got coming back and thinking, oh, my gosh, we just have so much talent. We have the possibilities that could be endless with this team. Yeah, I'm really excited about uh, this roster this year. I think, um, you know, I think the combination of our returning players and the way they've worked in the offseason, uh, just their overall mentality, mindset and leadership, and then you add in a lot of the new players that we brought in, many of them transferring uh, from other programs to, to really fit some needs uh, that we have on our roster. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, we've had the majority of our team uh, here since January. So the experience that we got in, in the weight room in January and February, that group coming together, and then obviously during spring practice, you know, it was definitely a, a, a big difference uh, just overall on, on both sides of the ball. And uh, so I'm, I'm definitely – Excited to get out here uh, next week and, and see how those guys have uh, really transformed over the summer. All right, Jeff, I will toss things over to Chuck Sullivan, who's going to open up some questions for our media members. Thanks again, Chris, and uh, welcome, Coach. We'll get started with questions. We'll start with Matt Baker from the Tampa Bay Times, please. Hey, Jeff, what are your early impressions of Bohannon? Uh, very strong. Uh, everything that we had hoped uh, from talking to the coaches at Baylor and, and really from people around him, just about his uh, work ethic, his leadership. You know, I had um, uh, one of our staff members uh, came up here on Memorial Day and there was only one car in the parking lot and that was Gary. And he was up here watching video on Memorial Day. And so uh, those things lined up with what we heard from the, the Baylor staff about him. Uh, but, you know, just overall hearing from our, our players and from our, our strength staff about the way he's meshed and uh, really kind of become a, a leader within his lifting group and running. Uh, so I've been very pleased with the uh, early uh, observations and, and feedback we've gotten uh, since Gary's gotten here. I'll take the next one from Kelly Quinlan from Bulls Insider. Hey, Jeff, I was just curious about, kind of attrition where things stand have some guys left since spring and then also 
just kind of who popped your eye in OTAs this offseason and offseason workouts of some of the new guys? Yeah, well, we definitely have uh, attrition. I think that's part of the, the new landscape in college football. Uh, you know, uh, a long time ago, as in about three years ago, right, your, your roster was uh, pretty much, uh, you know, kind of a, a one time for them to leave and come in. And, and now it's a continuous thing. Um, but I think for me overall, it's, it's about uh, making sure that we have the right fit uh, for our culture and, and the standards that we want to have in our program and kind of the vision of where we're going. And then the second thing is, you know, do they bring something to our, um, you know, the offense or defense where we have a need? And so I really feel like we've improved our roster uh, overall, uh, but there's definitely, you know, uh, been attrition, um, you know, like you've seen uh, across the country. And then as far as the people that have, have stood out, I mean, we're uh, very limited in what we're able to do in the summer. Uh, they did open up, you know, some uh, opportunities to, to get on the field uh, with the guys and do some individual work. Uh, I think for me, um, you know, there weren't a lot of surprises because the majority of the players that we're going to be counting on, you know, this fall were here since January. So I think the biggest things that I was able to see, you know, this summer with our guys working uh, was just the progression uh, of uh, guys from spring practice through, you know, the eight weeks of, of summer workouts and, and, you know, a guy like, uh, you know, Jimmy Horn, who, uh, has you know added about 12 pounds of uh, you know muscle mass to his body and and, and a lot of our guys we got a defensive end uh, Tremel Logan that you know uh, he was 211 pounds when he got here a year and a half ago and now he's up to 250 pounds and really just changed his body uh, overall so I've seen a lot of, of good progress uh, with our guys throughout the summer uh, but really the next step obviously is uh, fall camp next week. We'll go next to uh, Will Turner, please, from Bulls 24-7. Jeff, you guys were very, very um, aggressive in the transfer portal early and in in making sure those guys were getting in um, in the spring. You know, for you guys, what advantages did you see of, of having those guys in the spring and now that you're getting into summer, um, you know, instead of having those guys getting there July 1st, having them already, you know, well invested in, in having their time invested in the program but by July 1st? Yeah, you know, that, that's a huge advantage. Obviously, the you know last 10 years or so, you've seen more high school players that are graduating early and coming in in January. And, you know, I've been able to see throughout my career the advantages to that, especially with players that are coming in that you think are going to he help you as, uh, you know, in the next season. Now with the transfer portal and, and really uh, the transition that happens between December and January, um, you know, I believe we had, you know, 79 of our 85 scholarship players here for the entire spring and that was just you know minus a few of the high school guys that would be coming in the summer uh, so it's a huge advantage you know for us as coaches you know our year really starts in january each new team really kind of gets started in january and you go through the the w winter program with your uh workouts in the weight room and and um, you know everything that you do on the field conditioning wise and then getting into spring practice Obviously, you know, that's, you know, a month and a half uh, that you're able to have meetings and practice, which is very important uh, as you're making decisions and overall, you know, development of your team. And then when they get here this summer, uh, you know, they've already been here for six months as opposed to, you know, the guys are just showing up trying to figure it out. So uh, there's no, no question that's been an advantage uh, for us this year. And um, I think it's definitely going to put us uh, further ahead as we start fall camp. Turn on to Eric Bailey from Tulsa World, please. Coach, I appreciate your time today. Uh, I cover Oklahoma football, and I wanted to ask you uh, just your thoughts on Brent Venables and his jump to being a head coach for the Sooners. And do you have any really good stories of the time you guys spent together at Clemson? Yeah, C Coach Venables is absolutely incredible. Uh, he did a phenomenal job, obviously, at Clemson and uh, really just uh, transformed uh, our defense there at Clemson into one of the nation's best year after year. You know, Coach Venables was uh, very patient. Uh, he, he loved his time there at Clemson. Uh, I know that, you know, he turned down many, many jobs that maybe other people would have kind of jumped at to, to become a head coach. But, you know, for him, it was about, you know, finding that, that right fit. Obviously, nobody expected, you know, Oklahoma to open up the way that it did. Uh, but whenever it did, uh, you know, I was really proud for him because, you know, I know that uh, the coach that Oklahoma sent us uh, at Clemson and, uh, you know, the development that he had there under Coach Sweeney and, and so many of the, the staff members, 
uh, you know, Clemson send in Oklahoma, you know, a, a great version uh, of, of Brent Venables who's ready to, to be a successful head coach. And um, I've got a lot of respect uh, for Brent, uh, still very close with him and, and many of the coaches on his staff. And uh, I know he'll do very well. Go next to Leo Haggerty, please. Coach, I know you're not a guy to make excuses, but this is the first of your three years in tenure where you have a full spring, a full summer, and hopefully a full fall practice. How important is that to get that culture change and to start the winning tradition? Uh, yeah, there, there's no question. Uh, there's been a lot, a lot of challenges, many you know, uh, challenges that everybody across the country had to work through. Obviously, you know, coaches like myself and others that, that came in there in January of 2020, uh, it, it made it even more difficult, right? The, the, I think one of the most critical uh, parts of a, a coaching transition is that January to August in that very first off season. And uh, obviously with COVID, it was completely different. But, you know, this is what I would say, you know, looking back on it, um, you know, obviously we've been through a lot of adversity. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, things that we've had to, to work through. Uh, but times of adversity is really where you grow the most. And uh, I know for me individually, uh, as, as a coach, I, I've grown a lot in the two and a half years uh, going through the experiences and, and, and uh, trying to overcome a lot of the challenges that, that we've been going through. And I also feel like uh, as our football program, you know, it, it cr kind of creates uh, some scars for you that are really uh, good for uh, your future and, and for the things that are coming. So. You know, I've, I've told our players, you know, I've been, a, I've been around uh, some very success, been a part of some very successful teams and, and great moments. And really those uh, great seasons are whenever you're breaking through and you've been through kind of that adversity and it's been building and building and building and you finally uh, break through. That's really, you know, the, the most enjoyable time as a coach and as a player. And, and I feel like that's the, the mentality that this team has this year. Uh, we know we have a very challenging schedule. We, we play you know, for the, the top teams in our league and then very challenging non-conference uh, schedule. So uh, we know it's going to be difficult, but uh, with, with those challenges comes great opportunities, you know, for us to see how we stack up and see the improvement that we've made in the off season. And, and I have no doubt that uh, we'll definitely see that this year. Take the next one from Matt Marshall from the Orlando Sentinel, please. Jeff, I wanted to ask, how has Gary, uh, like, you know, got himself acclimated to the quarterback room, and what sort of competition do you expect in fall camp at that quarterback position? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I, I would say one thing. Uh, Timmy McLean, you know, our, our returning starter for last year, uh, had the best spring and summer that he's had since he's been here. And uh, I think that, you know, any time that you're uh, adding uh, talent to a room, to a position, you know, it really raises the level of uh, competition uh, in that room. And, and I've been really pleased uh, by how Timmy has responded this summer and uh, he's had an outstanding summer. You know, our, our goal is to, to find who our starting quarterback is going to be sooner than later. I don't envision this something that's going to extend, you know, late into to fall camp. Uh, I do think it's important for both Timmy and Gary to get an opportunity to, to go with the ones early in fall camp, let them compete, and then some at some point, uh, early to, to middle of fall camp, uh, I feel we're going to make a decision as a staff and uh, going ahead and announcing that for our team uh, so that we can move forward and, and have time uh, for whoever that starter is to, to, to uh, be the leader of that offense and, and of the team uh, for several weeks getting ready for BYU. We'll go next to Matt Baker, uh, Tampa Bay Times, please, for follow-up. Jeff, I wanted to follow up with what you were talking about on a breakthrough year and how, obviously how enjoyable that is. What gives you confidence with this roster and this team that you guys can finally break through this year? Yeah, well, I think that the biggest thing for me, uh, you're around them every day, right? And just the uh, seeing the, the progress and, and how we do things, right? We talk about it's all about the little things and, uh, you know, just watching our guys work this spring, watching them work this summer. Um, you know, we're not having some of the issues that we had my first and second year uh, where you're trying to get guys to understand what the standard is and to really be able to push through and, and uh, to do the things that are required to be successful uh, at this level of college football. So uh, it's been completely different in, in that respect. And then also I feel like we've, uh, you know, this is definitely going to be the most talented team uh, that we've had since I've been here. Uh, obviously, uh, COVID and, and transition 
uh, you know, affected our, our first, you know, team uh, in 2020. And, and last year, I felt like we were in a little bit better position. But, you know, I think the combination of the overall buy-in, the mindset of our players, uh, the uh, additions uh, that we brought in uh, from the, the player personnel side, and then also uh, Bob Shoup, our defensive coordinator, Travis Trickett, offensive coordinator, uh, they've definitely uh, added uh, to our overall team. And uh, I'm not predicting uh, any number of wins. We'll see what it looks like. It's a very, com like I said, you, you could look at our schedule and make a case that we have the most difficult schedule in the conference. And uh, so it, it's definitely not going to be easy. But I, I feel like uh, on your journey to getting to where you want to go, there are those breakthrough wins, those breakthrough moments. And I feel like this team is prepared to, to uh, you know, be able to experience uh, those this year. Take the next one from Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call DT. Coach, uh, not only yourself, but Tony Elliott now being at Virginia and uh, Brent Venables, who you mentioned before at Oklahoma, just what you can say about that, that coaching tree that leads back to Coach Sweeney and, and what it is about Dabo that has been so special and kind of paramount to building success with many coaches, including yourself. Well, absolutely. I, I could talk for days on that. You know, Coach Sweeney is just an incredible person. And, um, you know, he's a, a developer of men. And obviously that's the, the young men, student athletes as players, but also uh, developing uh, his staff. And I mean, I can remember even before I became a, a co-offensive coordinator, when I was a recruiting coordinator, you know, and I'd go on the road with him recruiting, just some of the conversations that we would have, you know, and he'd say, hey, when you become a head coach one day, these are some of the things that you're going to have to kind of work through. So, and I know he's having the same conversations with both Tony and Brent. And so really just kind of uh, over time preparing. And I think overall, uh, the way that he uh, communicated uh, his culture, his beliefs, and the consistency in that, I think is, um, you know, overall what, what helps young coaches, you know, learn. Sometimes there may be a head coach that maybe he does everything and he just wants you to do, kind of do your job. But Coach Sweeney is one that really uh, not only develops his players, but develops his coaches and his staff. And, uh, you know, but the other side of it is he has such an incredible coach, culture that coaches don't want to leave. And so that's why you saw for many years, you know, the, the continuity that we had. And then, you know, finally there, there is a point to, to go out and spread your wings and, uh, you know, have your, your opportunity to be a head coach and, and run your program. But, you know, he, he's still a, a major mentor for me and one that I uh, lean on uh, for advice as I'm, you know, navigating uh, the challenges of, of being a head coach. And a follow-up here for South Florida and UCF, that was something that has, has been a rivalry over time, something that people would like to get back, but they're leaving the conference. What are your thoughts on the UCF South Florida connection? And, and would you like to have a non-conference bout with them when they go to the Big 12? Yeah, I think there's so many things changing so fast <laughs> that, you know, it's hard to really, uh, it, it feels like we're all on a ride right now and everything's just happening super fast. And at some point it's got to slow down and, and then we can get to a little bit of normalcy of what the future looks like. I think it makes a lot of sense to continue that rivalry. I know it's one that's, uh, you know, been going on, uh, you know, since we, have started our program and, uh, you know, have been uh, a great rivalry through the years. Now, what that looks like, you know, with uh, the non-conference schedules that are, have already been planned out, you know, for the next four or five years, how all that gets set up, I'm sure that'll be decided by, you know, the athletic directors and, and leadership of the school. But uh, I definitely would like to, to continue that uh, when possible. Okay, we'll go next to uh, Peter Blake, please. What's going on, Coach? Uh, you talked about Dabo and his advice that he gave you. Can you kind of expound on that, what kind of advice he gave you going through these adverse times? And then on top of it, how excited are you to add Coach Morris to your coaching staff? Yeah, well, I would say, you know, overall advice from Coach Sweeney, you know, number one, hey, be yourself, right, and realize that, uh, you know, you, you don't have to go down to South Florida and try to do everything that we did at Clemson but take the things that you believe in. And, uh, and then the other thing is understand you're not going to do it, you know, like that, you know, and, and really you go back and, and look at the rise at Clemson. I mean, it, it took us many years. I can remember, you know, much like I'm just finished my second year going into our third year, you know, we, we finished six, six and seven uh, at, in Coach Sweeney's second year. And there was a lot of questions of what's going on. And, 
And Coach Sweeney made the comment, actually, uh, South Florida came up, came up to Charlotte and beat Clemson in the bowl game. And I was on that staff at Clemson, uh, finishing Coach Sweeney's second year. And there was a lot of questions of, of what the future looks like. And it was 2010. And I'll never forget, you know, Coach Sweeney in the post-game uh, press conference uh, after losing to South Florida in the bowl game. You know, he talked about the culture change and the process that's been, you know, happening and, and the standards beginning to change and our roster and everything's coming together. And he said, he went out on a limb. He said, we're starting a new decade. And he said, mark my word, in 2020, we'll look back at this and it'll be the best decade in the history of Clemson football. And the next year, you know, it took off. And, and also that leads into the next, next point is uh, Coach Morris came into Clemson the next year. Uh, right there, uh, he, he, and he was a big part uh, of the uh, change there at Clemson with our offense. I was going into my third year, and uh, Coach Morris came to us from Tulsa after being an offensive coordinator for one year. And really, Coach Morris had a way of having a fast-paced offense that maybe looked complicated and created problems for defense, but was very simple to teach to the players. And we had some really talented freshmen, Sammy Watkins being one of them coming in, that we needed to get on the field and, and be able to go out and play. And so, you know, that, that was a, a big change for us at, at Clemson uh, during that 2011 season when Coach Morris came in. And so, you know, working very closely with him for four years, uh, obviously we, we developed a, a great uh, relationship. And then when he left to, to go to SMU to be the head coach, that's when you know, Coach Sweeney promoted Tony and I to, to co-offensive coordinators, and we were able to, to continue running the offense there at Clemson the next five years. But, you know, I talked to, to Coach Morse a lot uh, during his, his times at SMU, and really SMU was in a very similar situation when he got there to the program that I took over here at South, Flor South Florida. And really kind of that process, you know, his first year, you know, I think they might have won one or two games. And then his third year, you know, they won seven and, and went to a bowl game for the first time in five years. So really, you know, someone kind of leaving Clemson, going into this conference and finding a way to kind of flip and, and turn the tide a little bit. I think um, uh, adding him here is going to be a great resource for myself just from, you know, a lot of the head coaching uh, decisions and, and somebody I can bounce things off of. But then also for Coach Trickett and our offensive staff to have, uh, you know, Coach Morris in the building just to be able to add some ideas and thoughts. Um, you know, I've been on Coach Morris for the last uh, couple of years to come join us and uh, really excited that he decided uh, to do that uh, this fall. We'll take a Thank follow you, up. Coach. We'll take a follow up from Kelly Quinlan, please. Coach, I was just curious about your defense, just kind of what's what are the things you're going to look for? What's the identity? I know you wanted to get more aggressive, but just kind of what are you looking for going ahead into this season? Yeah, uh, I, I think number one is we have to develop confidence uh, in our defense and in our defensive players. And I saw that this spring. You know, obviously it starts with your defensive coordinator. Uh, Coach Shoup has come in and, and really uh, got complete buy-in from the defensive players very early uh, in, in winter and in, in spring practice. And then, you know, I think overall we've got, you know, you start right there in the middle with uh, Antonio Greer and, and Dwayne Boyles, two linebackers that have played a lot of ball here and have a lot of experience and really kind of leading the way for our defense. And then having some returners in the secondary. I think probably the biggest storyline is, is we, we signed uh, eight defensive linemen in the offseason. You know, several, many of those transfers, a guy like Jatorian Hansford coming in from Missouri. Uh, he had a, a great spring. I think he's going to really add a lot uh, to that defensive line position. Um, and then, you know, we have Rashad Chaney came in from Minnesota as a defensive tackle. Rashawn Yates, a returning defensive uh, lineman. I just feel overall that that was a position uh, that uh, we really didn't have the, the quality uh, talent or depth that we needed to compete at a high level defensively last year. And I feel like uh, this group uh, that's developed, the returners that have developed, and then the new guys that have come in, uh, I think that's going to be a, a big change for us. And then the combination of that, uh, along with the scheme uh, and, and coaching uh, direction from Coach Shoup and our defensive staff, um, I think that's really the, the, the phase that has the chance for, for the biggest jump this year. And uh, I can't wait to, to watch those guys play this fall. Well, we can't wait to watch you play. Jeff Scott, your third season there at USF. Have a great start to fall camp, and we're looking forward to watching you guys get things set on September 3rd. Great. Thank you for having me on. Go Bulls.
Thank you, Coach. Uh, you know, it's he talks about like the, the third year. Yeah. I was talking to a head coach who said, you know, when I came in and I, I wanted to put my stamp on the team, it's hard your first year because you're going to have a lot of people pushing back. I want to do things the way that I yeah. wanted to do. But if you're going to do that, then you're going to get the same results. Year two, it's, okay, thanks, Coach, for, for implementing it. We see what you were trying to do. And year three is, oh, hey, all that finally gets put together. Yeah. And now for Jeff Scott's team, you have that and you have the pieces. Plus, and he was dealing with COVID those first couple yeah. of years, too. So, listen, he doesn't want to do a win prediction. I know their schedule is daunting when you look at it. I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction. Okay. This is a breakthrough year for them. They're going to get six wins. And they're going to become Ooh, bowl eligible. Okay. So and we can play this again next year. If I'm hired back next year. And we'll see if I'm, <laughs> if I'm right. But, yeah, it is a tough schedule. It is. There's a lot of tough games on there. But I think they're going to knock some teams off that people wouldn't expect them to win. I think they're going to win some good games. And I think they're going to get to that six-win mark. I really do. I think they're, they have that much talent. I mean, it's a little bit of butterfly effect. You think about how one coaching staff's decision to make a – Name a starting quarterback at spring, as Dave Aranda did at Baylor. How that now affects the future of USF, because otherwise there was no one really in the transfer portal during that May, April time yeah. in terms of quarterbacks, because most have already found a home, or they still don't know if they're going to be named a starter. So now you have Gary Bohannon, who also going in with Timmy McLean, mm -hmm. battling out for that job, and you have a whole summer with those two quarterbacks to figure out what you had. Otherwise... You wouldn't have even had Gary Bohan until maybe the fall. And I love what he said, right? It, it has raised the game mm. of Timmy McClain. And I also love what he said was he's not going to dilly-dally towards the end. He's going to get to a point relatively quick in camp, and he's going to name a starter. Yeah. I, I, I do appreciate that. Sometimes you wonder when a transfer comes in, oh, hey, excited that we have this talent coming in. But it also means taking a spot away. So it was really cool to listen to what how it's elevated Timmy's role in terms of we, we talk about a lot about offense in terms of defense now playing in this league against those high tempo offenses that we see where does this defense need to get better yeah they just need to be more consistent in the thing up front when we've talked about up front brought in a lot of defensive linemen coach Scott mentioned that towards the end for them just a much improved team again six wins Six wins. We'll see. All right, let's listen to some of the players that are joining us. Wide receiver Xavier Weaver, linebacker Antonio Greer. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Xavier, I'm going to start with you because the, the quarterback position undecided, but Gary joins and Timmy also in this battle. What has this summer been like as those two quarterbacks try and also build some rhythm with you in terms of picking up the football and going out and, and, and making a practice? Uh, yeah, uh, the summer's been good so far. You know, it feels like we haven't missed a beat. Uh, you know, we have a very uh, talented quarterback room, and just Gary just came in and just added to it. You know, he uh been up, uplifting the uh, younger guys and young quarterbacks, you know, making everybody better around him. So the atmosphere for the summer has been great so far. Okay, we're going to go right to questions from the media, please. We'll start with uh, Will Turner, please, for the first one. Hey, for Xavier, obviously last year, you know, you had such a, a, a huge year, you know, offensively, you had a breakout season. Um, you know, this year could could really be a, a, an even bigger year for you for the next level. And if you can cement, you know, have another good year, cement your draft stock, you know, is that kind of in your mind is is the next level and kind of what you want to do is, is that kind of on your mind this season? Uh, of course, it's on my mind, but also I'm really ready, ready to change this program around, you know, win games, get to a bowl game. Before I even think about all that other stuff, I'm ready to, you know, be a part of the program and be a part of this program while we about to change it. So I'm just ready. We'll take the next one from Kelly Quinlan, please. Antonio, defensively, can you just kind of describe what, what's so different? What are you guys doing differently? And, and kind of what are your expectations for the defense? Um, man, where do I start? <clears throat> um, starting with the, the summer, man, getting these transfers in was – was a great addition to our team. I'm so grateful for each and every one of them that came in. And like Coach Scott talked about, um, the defensive line that we got to transfer it in is uh, the, probably the biggest addition to our team or to our defense specifically. Um, but overall, man, we, we were stacked. We got a lot of depth and a lot of um, people to come in and help us. And I'm grateful to have them here as well. Um, a lot of good leadership guys, too, that's willing to step up and take on big roles for us and um, also lead us. Um, <clears throat> but I'm... I'm very excited to see what these guys are going to do this year. We'll go next to Leo Haggerty, please. 
Guys, this is for both of you, and you can decide who wants to answer first. Uh, right. It's got to be nice to see that the university from top to bottom is behind you, and you're going to have that indoor practice facility. How much is that going to help knowing that rain, sleet, snow, oh, you don't get snow in Tampa, but lightning, you're going to be able to practice at the right time and no practice change. Go ahead, bro. Um, <clears throat> I'll probably say first, man, I'm, I'm grateful to, I was noble enough to stay here at University of South Florida through the good and the bad, man. And just to see where this team is going, the, the uh, Coach Scott, what he's doing with the culture of the team is, is just amazing, man. It's, it's, a, it's a good thing to be a part of it and not only that, to be the start of it. You know what I'm saying? And um, going on our 26th year, 27th year, and just grateful for everything that um, alumni has done for us and the Bulls. But, man, it's, it's amazing what we're going to do this season, and um, I, I'm just looking forward to it. You know, um, piggybacking over him, like yeah, like he said, it's definitely amazing, definitely the best thing to be part of it. You know, every day we go out there, walk on the field, and just see the indoor practice facility being built up, you know, and I'm just ready to get inside of it. You know, sometimes we don't have lights that night. We can't, you know, when it's raining, we can't practice. So I'm ready to be in there at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., running routes with the guys. So <laughs> I'm just excited. We'll go next to Dan Tortora, please. This is for you both. Talking about changing, you know, being a part of the change of this program. What makes you believe going into this season that you're ripe to see that change happen in the win-loss column? And then secondly, for you both, if you'd like to see that UCF-South Florida rivalry continue when it's a non-conference game. Uh, for sure. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited about the season because I've seen what we did so far in the summer. You know, I see what we're coming from, the coaching staff, the strength and conditioning coaches getting us ready for the, the season coming up. So I'm excited to see what we what we um, ready to show this year. And, then, um, yeah, I can say that. I'm, I'm really excited, ready for y'all to see the new Bulls. Uh, yeah, man, like you said, I mean, the summer workout, man, the training has been amazing. It's been um, flawless. Um, guys transforming their bodies, getting bigger, faster, stronger. Um, on different levels, man, we're bonding as a team, you know, transfers, you probably wouldn't even know that this team has transfers coming in, man, and the way we've bonded, the way we've came together, do things on our own, <clears throat> it's just grateful to see it, man, and, you know, this is my last season, you know, I'm grateful for guys like Zay and, you know, Rashad Chaney coming in, transferring to help us, DJ Gordon coming in, transferring, AB, <clears throat> man, it's grateful to have all of them here.